Okay, so here we are, started with the close-ups now. And uh, the first thing we're looking at is the uh, muzzle protector. This is a standard issue on uh, K11s, uh, G11s and uh, K31s. And <clears throat> it's a uh, basically a little piece of brass. Um, I think many of the uh, our friends in the US who have such a thing already have the... Uh, have seen what these are, but a little bit of spring steel, and this part protects the uh, post, which is here, looking through the uh, viewfinder and trying to see it. Uh, there we go. And uh, as with the K31, it's on here, we're protected by two ears. Um, there we are. Here are the two ears. And here's the post, which is on this diagonal um, track. And so you can drift it quite precisely forwards and backwards, which uh, then gives it a slight uh, left or right bias. Um, proceeding along, here is the clip, uh, which holds the two parts of the um, wood on uh, to cover the barrel. <clears throat> and this clip is the same as is used on the uh, K31. This uh, strange thing here is allow is allows you to uh, stack three of them uh, together uh, with their butts on the ground and their uh, interlocking during uh, with this thing. This, of course, is the bayonet lug. Uh, the bayonet fits uh, just over the muzzle and over the bayonet lug. And <clears throat> the wood, as you can see, uh, this is 93 years old, so it's uh, suffered a little bit in its time. And interestingly, looks like somebody's had to uh, replace or uh, uh, this part here has been uh, repaired because there must have been quite a big gash in it. Um, same method as on the uh, K31 for the... Uh, uh, for the sling and a very 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 similar if not identical sling uh, let's just go all the way along here you can see um, this seems to be made of steel uh, the one on my uh, K31 slings seems to be made of aluminium so uh, maybe that's one difference and uh, here we go all the way back to the clip which is uh, in the rear of the stock as you can see. So that's the um, sling which seems to be identical to uh, to the K31. So let's go back here. Also a very similar setup uh, as on the K31 for the uh, rear sight uh, calibrated as you can see in this case to 1500 meters. So um, that's uh, quite a long range, so uh, similar operation. Um, I think what's different is this is mounted on the wood and on, not on the barrel. Um, so uh, exactly how reassembling the rifle affects the accuracy I really can't say, but uh, this has been improved on with the K31 and this mounts uh, onto the barrel. Um, so moving back, here we can see the serial number. This indicates that uh, we've been, it's been manufactured around uh, 1920. Um, and this very long bolt part with the extractor, uh, which you can see here on the top. Um, and uh, going back, these grooves, I don't know what these grooves are for. <coughs> Um, if they were for uh, improved optic or uh, a diopter or something, I don't know. Um, here is something which characterizes the K11 from the K31. is this red uh, Bakelite, I presume, handle. Um, I don't think it's wood. Um, it seems to be Bakelite or, or something similar. Um, but very similar to the K31 here is the... Uh, is the uh, rear of the firing pin which you at the moment it's on safe um, and 
just pulling it out, which is difficult. One handed, I'll try it. There we go. So now it's uh, not only cocked, um, which you can tell by this large amount of space here, um, but it's uh, waiting now for the uh, trigger to uh, pull the detent down, which is up uh, just under this um, metal part here. You can just about see, uh, if I get my fingers out of the way, that's this thing, um, will be released as I pull the trigger and the pin, the whole assembly, shoots forward with uh, uh, spring power, there you go. And um, that's because the trigger released or pulled on this uh, detent here, which allowed this to uh, spring forward. Um, otherwise the stock is very similar to the K31. Uh, again we have the uh, metal uh, butt plate which is held on by two screws, as it is on the K31. And um, in this particular case, I mentioned that it is uh, uh, belonged to the family <coughs> of a friend of mine. Uh, underneath here is uh, the uh, troop tag of the grandfather of uh, my friend. So um, I've forgotten his first name, but the family name is Seuss. And uh, it shows the address is in uh, the town of Valleyzellen in uh, Switzerland. And uh, so uh, this really is very much a family heirloom, which is why I intend to look after it. Um, so there we go. This is a K11. Um, perhaps another area which is slightly different from the K31 is this uh, rather more squarely shaped magazine. Um, it also has a machined follower, which is a very nice follower, as you can see, that's this thing. Um, and uh, also the spring arrangement on this is different from on the K31 inside it. Um, it's a bit difficult to show you one-handed. Uh, the K the K31's follower is pressed steel. This here is machined. Uh, very nice piece of machining. <coughs> Um, otherwise, the, uh, the spring release is very similar to the K31. And there is a little spring. I don't know if we can see that. Uh, difficult. And um, so that's how it's released from the uh, gripping on the uh, <coughs> underside of the receiver through this area here or this uh, part of the clip here. So uh, that's a magazine holding six uh, shots, as I uh, mentioned before, or as we saw before. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, probably as far as we can go with uh, a quick look at the uh, K11. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll get out the K31 and we can compare. <coughs> 